Hello and welcome back. Hi everyone. All right, Andreas is here with me, and today, what are we going? What am I going to learn from you today? Uh, today again, Quarkus, as always. <laughs> um, now we want to talk about uh, fault tolerance, um, meaning um, what can we do to uh, mitigate um, faults that can happen. I mean, maybe you make a REST call to another service, and it fails. So um, you need to uh, think about what you're going to do in that case. Are you failing your client or mm -hmm. are you maybe retrying it? Uh, maybe it works the next time because just that one pot had an error or so. Um, or are you uh, using a fallback mechanism? So, um, yeah, using okay. like a default answer. Also, what are you going to do if you have uh, uh, overloaded a system with a lot of delay? Um, maybe you shouldn't let your client wait forever. Maybe you should again abort and give him like a fallback uh, answer or so um, to keep your system responsive. Okay. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And with that, I think. What's the, what's the first part? Uh, first part will be about retries. Um, but actually, uh, I first going to show you a bit our framework. All right. Um, uh... I prepared a bit. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, just to set the stage, um, <laughs> we have our cookie resource where we can get cookies. And um, yeah, here we just uh, bake a cookie with the cookie service. Bake cookie. Yeah. And <laughs> um, the problem is, this is a very unreliable cookie service. So for once, uh, in 20% of the cases, um, we are out of ingredients, happens. Another 30% of the cakes, uh, cases, uh, we burn the cookies too, too late to pull them out of the <laughs> oven. Okay. And only in the remaining time, uh, we actually get our new cookie. Okay. Um, so that should set the stage. <laughs> And um, we can have a look at uh, the responses, what we get from the service. Um, so just Postman calling it. Um, so here's your new cookie. Oh, we were Ooh, lucky. The can you one. increase the oh, font yeah. size? Uh, this was... I... Yes. I remembered it in the IDE this time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so I'm super lucky. Ah, I'm out of ingredients. Out of ingredients. Okay. Uh, and now it burned. Okay, so you see in like 50% of the cases or so, um, we still get a good cookie, mm -hmm. but you can easily imagine like we have a, the, the, the baker overslept and or drank too much yesterday evening, too much uh, uh, Glühwein, <laughs> and um, now he's burning even more. Okay. So we have a very unreliable service. Um, and it's important to note, this can be anything. This can be your REST call that you make to somewhere else. This can be a bad database or something like that. Um, so now with the updated thing, you should get way more burned cookies. And you see now it's Ooh. quite tedious as a client. Yeah. Really bad. <laughs> yeah, way No cookies bad. for you. Yeah, no cookies for me. Oh, wow. Okay. So. <laughs> this might happen that it must not be a, a thing that is all the time happening, mm -hmm. but maybe your the service you call has a bad day. Yeah, I mean, they made some errors or the, the, they are overloaded or so something like that. Mm -hmm. A lot of things can happen in the real world in production. So you want to mitigate that. Okay. Um, one thing we can do, um, we could retry. So uh, we can just add this retry annotation. Mm -hmm. We get this retry annotation when we add this dependency. Quarkus small ry fault tolerance. This okay. is an implementation of the uh, microprofile fault tolerance uh, spec um, for Quarkus. Mm -hmm. And as always, there's a nice guide, the small ry fault tolerance guide, um, which explains you everything. Um, 
as always with an example project starting from which dependency you need and so on. So when you have added this um, dependency, mm -hmm. then we have the add retry annotation. You can have a look into that. There's a couple of config parameters that we can specify. Um, for starters, we have the max retries. So by default, it retries at most three times. Mm -hmm. After that, it finally fails. So you can increase that or decrease that or just keep it. There's also a delay. So often when it failed at the moment, then it makes no sense to directly retry it. Um, maybe you should wait a second or so. Okay, but this is on the backend side. So normally I would have the retry on the on the client side. Yeah, but and... I'm also client of some other services in the backend. Yeah, but now you're you're using it on your backend side. Yeah. So, and normally, if you do the retry logic, you would implement it on the client side yeah. or whoever is calling it. But now you're doing it on the on the other side. Yeah, I can use it everywhere. Okay in my service, um, but it would be uh, especially good for, for when I make a REST call, for example, because when I make a, um, a REST call, that might fail, or okay. uh, yeah, when I gRPC call anything that I interact with another service, mm -hmm. because that other service could fail. Okay. I usually would not use it inside my service. This is just a of course, example, yeah. uh, but you can. You're free to use this on any um, method of any beam. You can also specify it up here for the whole class. Then every method in this mm -hmm. beam will have this applied. Um, so this is a quite powerful tool. Okay. So uh, what does it what what does it actually do? Um, it retries. So when I call this function from from my client then I don't have to handle the retry. It will retry it for three times. Yeah. And if in those three times there's no non-error message, it will return the error message. Yeah. Nice. So um, let's just try this. OK. Um, I mean, probably from the client or also from other implementations, you know, when you try to implement the retry, it's tedious. And it's also not so easy to really make it good. Mm -hmm. And a lot of things you have to take care of. Um, this does all of that for you. So here's my new cookie. How lucky have we been? So we tried to bake a cookie, but it burned. It, okay. And then we tried again. And then it worked. Huh. I like it. We can do this again. Now we tried to bake it. It burned. Then we had no ingredients left, and then we tried again, and it worked. <laughs> okay. So that's this, that's this really, really nice. nice. <laughs> this is really nice. Okay. And that's so all you need to do. This, the the retry will actually um, re-execute the function. Yeah. And then we'll wait for a non non error part. Yeah. Doing okay. And you so. You can also specify for what it should retry and when it should abort. Because um, there might be errors. I mean, you call it a REST API. Mm -hmm. There might be a 404 not found. Okay. Because what you try to get is actually not found. Mm -hmm. That is not something you should retry. True, yeah. Uh, it's an expected error. Uh, in our case, we could say, okay, if we are out of ingredients, it makes no sense to retry. So there's abort on. And we can just specify the class of the exception that we want to, um, in that case, we want to abort. Mm -hmm. There's also um, retry on. This is also a list uh, which would specify. Ah, okay. <clears throat> basically, this is blacklisting of mm -hmm. exceptions oh, when it should okay. not apply. Mm -hmm. And this is whitelisting of exceptions when it should apply. Okay. So depending on your use case, you can do that. Um, so now when we do it again, it has to rebuild. Um, burned, 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 all burned. 
No ingredients left, okay. Mm -hmm. Was the last one. And we are out of ingredients. And you see, we, we tried it once, twice. Was burnt. Or was burnt. Once, mm -hmm. twice. And, and the third time, it uh, we ended with that. So we would have ended anyways. Uh, out of ingredients. Yeah. So first time. And we had no ingredients left. And we did not retry. Okay. So that's what you can do there. Uh, also, you can specify, like I said, um, you might want to wait for a second until you retry. Mm -hmm. um, you can also specify the unit here, like if you want, rather want to write it like that. Um, okay. <clears throat> that's just a nice thing that there's this. Um, but by default, it's like milliseconds. Um, so in that case, we read right now. First, we have to build again. Okay. So you see now the call takes longer. Takes a lot longer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, maybe if I show you the logs directly, I do the call again. Okay. Worked first time. Now you see there's this delay in between. Mm -hmm. Um, and oh wait, I will turn off my camera. Uh, oh, let's hope oh, it's this one. Yes, good, so now it's... there you can see it right. Yeah, I mean, the important part is, is like this here. Yeah, so more you can stay. Well, you don't have the timings, ah, the timings yeah, yeah, are behind yeah, me. Timing. So now you will yeah. see, okay, it's it's one second you see, here, zero second, one second, two seconds, yeah. three seconds. So, yeah. okay, yeah, got it. Nice. Um, and there's even more. <laughs> so uh, for su such retries, now we have a constant retry. But mm -hmm. it could also make sense to um, to increase the time um, until you retry. Um, so for example, when you uh, sometimes you have e exponential back off strategies, mm -hmm. where you uh, exponentially increase the time um, when you retry. Um, this helps to um to spread out the calls a bit more okay Maybe. so the first retry would be after one second the next retry would be after five seconds yeah, ten after seconds two, and, or whatever yeah after okay four eight sixteen um so we could uh do like max retries six or so that we can see a bit more and then it's exponential back off this also has some properties like the factor this always doubles it. Mm -hmm. There's also a max delay. So it will not wait more than uh, 60 seconds. Okay. Um, between each retry. So if we try that again, you can now see it's getting longer and longer until we retry. Okay, I have to turn off my camera again. Yeah. So okay. So we have initially zero, we have then one, one second, oh, okay. two, four, mm -hmm. and then uh, eight. Yeah. And we, now we are waiting for sixteen seconds. So this will take longer and longer and longer. Okay. Yeah. This is pretty cool, because I only thought that the client can do this and not the backend part. Yeah, you always have to consider that. In the back end, when we call another service, we are clients. You also need to say, yeah. We are just in, we are in the middle. Right, <laughs> we yeah. We are both. Yeah. We are back end uh, and we are clients. Yeah, but but still, this like this endpoint might be something that uh, the client will actually uh, contact. Yeah, I mean. But you can also configure it that it would be possible to have all the um, the logic from the client basically all the retry logic, you only, so you can filter it out that you say, okay, only if this really doesn't do anything and I have, there's an error I can't fix, then I will get the error back. But otherwise I will keep trying. So that, that's pretty nice. Yeah, I mean, you still might need a retry logic in the client because you could have connection drops in between. Yes, of course, yeah. Um, but we as a backend, we should always uh, try to provide the best service possible for the client. Mm -hmm. 
And this is just a tool that helps uh, enormously with that. And yeah. uh, you get it basically for free. I mean, this costs nothing. Yeah. Um, but basically, this would be something that you would you wouldn't do it in a normal backend. You would more likely do it in a, a BFF kind of in scenario. A BFF, it's especially important mm -hmm. because you you're mainly uh, just calling other services and mm -hmm. aggregating stuff. Um, but also in the normal backend, you have like um, database where you might be able to have a fallback uh, or. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> or retry it because the database connection might be bad or so. Mm -hmm. And we and we will come to other annotations. Mm -hmm. um, so you can do a lot of stuff with that and uh, handle failures uh, gracefully and, and in a nice and concise way um, that is easy to maintain and to understand. I mean, when I read this, I, I know what's going on. Yeah, I do that's pretty cool. Re six retries at most with a delay of one second. When this happens, I abort mm -hmm. and uh, I have an exponential back off strategy for the retries. So, and nice. no code and maintained uh, by, by ourselves um, mm -hmm. that we have to yeah, maintain and make sure it really works. You just add this annotation. Nice. So now the, the question is, how often can you have you used this in a project actually? Uh, I've seen a lot of projects where it should have been used, but it was not Quarkus, so it wasn't easy to use it like that. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. um, in uh, Quarkus projects, I haven't used it too often, the retry thing, mm -hmm. because there we didn't have the, the bad other services that, that ah, okay. continuously require that. But uh, from some so customer projects, I know I have some candidates in mind where it directly would put this. Okay, um, so you wouldn't put it in just as a precaution. You would only use it if you really can use it and not just for, okay, fallback, default fallback. If there's anything wrong, then just do this. Yeah, I mean, um, you also need to consider what this implies. You will, if not a service fails, this might cause it to be called six times for mm -hmm. every single time you get called. So it's like a, a DOS attack. <laughs> Um, so you scale up <laughs> uh, the errors. Uh, so um, you need to to consider this and okay. to make sure you don't uh, yeah uh, kill the other service even more. But that's for example why we have the exponential back off or so, uh, and should add the delay so we don't like DDoS it. Um, okay. And also like this, um, you really have to consider this. When do you really want to retry? As I said. When I make a REST call and I get a 404, uh, where it can happen, mm -hmm. uh, get user by ID or so, and uh, the ID does not exist, then I will get a 404. There's no need to retry. So, yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, you still need to think about when you use this and if okay. it makes sense. But uh, if it makes sense for you, it's easy.